Picture this. On one side of the gym, someone is chasing a wicked muscle pump, curling a pair of dumbbells with veins popping. On the other side, another lifter is chalking up, psyching themselves to crush a near-max squat. Both believe they're on the optimal path to gains. So who's right? Is bigger always stronger? Or can you get strong without getting huge? Today, we're settling the score between hypertrophy training and strength training. And the answer isn't as simple as light weights for size versus heavy weights for strength. Stick around, because by the end, you'll know how to grow big muscles and big lifts. I've been lifting for years as both an athlete and a lifter, and I've lived on both extremes. Early on, I chased hypertrophy, the pump, the mirror muscles, the sleeve stretching biceps. It worked for looks, but then the skinny powerlifters outlifted me on leg day. So I flipped to the other side, pure strength training. My squat and bench exploded, but ironically, some muscles barely grew. I was strong, but I didn't have the physique I wanted. After years of plateauing, I realized, why choose? Why not combine the best of both? Science agrees. A 2023 analysis of 178 studies showed all resistance training builds both size and strength, but the way you train shifts the focus. Heavy loads drive strength, and higher volume drives muscle growth. In this video, I'll break down hypertrophy versus strength in plain English. Reps, sets, rest, recovery, and adaptations. We'll clear up the biggest myths, and more importantly, I'll show you how to blend the two for maximum size and strength. Whether you're new or experienced, this will help you train smarter and maybe laugh a bit along the way. Let's get into it. First, let's get clear on the difference. Hypertrophy training is about muscle size, building fuller, thicker fibers for aesthetics. Strength training is about force, how much weight you can move for a single rep. Both involve lifting, but the way you program them is different. Intensity and reps. Strength training uses heavier loads and low reps, usually one to five reps at 85 to 100% of your max. Hypertrophy training uses moderate loads and moderate reps, usually six to 12 reps at 60 to 85%. Recent research shows muscle growth can happen across a wide rep range, even up to 20 or more reps, as long as you train close to failure. Heavier weights still deliver the biggest strength gains because they demand more from your nervous system. Volume. Hypertrophy training thrives on more total sets each week, usually 10 to 20 hard sets per muscle. Strength training often uses fewer reps per set, but sometimes just as much total work. It's simply concentrated in big lifts. Volume is the currency of gains, and you need enough of it whether your focus is size or strength. Rest. Strength programs call for long rests of three to five minutes so you can fully recover before the next heavy set. Hypertrophy programs usually keep rest shorter, around 60 to 90 seconds, to maintain fatigue and metabolic stress. Both approaches work, but they serve different purposes. Strength maximizes peak output. Hypertrophy maximizes the pump and muscle fatigue. Exercise selection. Strength training focuses on a few key lifts, like the squat, bench, and deadlift. Hypertrophy training uses more variety to hit every angle of a muscle group, like combining presses, flies, and cables for the chest. Power lifters care about improving performance in their main lifts, while bodybuilders care about exhausting every muscle fiber. So what actually happens in your body with each style? Hypertrophy literally means growth. Your muscle fibers get larger by adding contractile proteins and storing more glycogen and fluid. Strength is about producing force, which depends not just on muscle mass, but also on your nervous system. Hypertrophy training creates micro tears and metabolic stress, which trigger muscles to repair and grow. The adaptations are mostly muscular, bigger fibers, more glycogen, sometimes shifts in fiber type, and even small increases in capillary density. You also gain some endurance since you're doing more reps. The main focus is on stressing the muscle enough to grow. Strength training also grows muscle, but a huge part of the gains comes from neural adaptation. Your nervous system learns to recruit more fibers, fire them faster, and coordinate them better. That's why beginners often get stronger quickly without looking much bigger. They're upgrading the software that controls their muscles. Over time, size and strength go hand in hand. A bigger muscle usually has the potential to be a stronger one, and heavy training is itself a growth stimulus. The difference is where the emphasis lies. Hypertrophy focuses on mechanical tension and fatigue inside the muscle, 
While strength maximizes motor unit recruitment, firing rate, and technique, the best results come from training both. More horsepower from bigger muscles and a more efficient engine from a tuned-up nervous system. Research backs this up. A 2022 meta-analysis found heavy and light loads build similar muscle size when total work is matched. But heavy training produces greater one-rep max strength because of neural factors. A 2025 study showed the same thing. Both heavy and light training grew muscle equally, but heavy loads gave superior strength on max tests. In plain English, muscle growth depends on effort and volume, while maximum strength also depends on how well your nervous system can drive your muscles. There's also the difference in feel. Hypertrophy training often leaves you with a pump and muscle soreness, signs of metabolic stress and micro damage. Strength training usually gives less pump, but more neural fatigue or joint stress after heavy low rep sets. Both are valid signals, just different types of stress. In simple terms, hypertrophy training maximizes growth signals inside the muscle, while strength training maximizes neural recruitment and performance. Both overlap, but the balance shifts depending on how you train. If you've ever done a high volume hypertrophy leg day, like five sets of 12 squats, you know the soreness can be brutal. Stairs become the enemy. That's because hypertrophy training, with its higher reps and longer time under tension, causes more muscle damage and delayed onset muscle soreness. The upside is growth. The downside is hobbling around for days and needing smart scheduling so you don't crush sore muscles back to back. Strength training, on the other hand, usually causes less muscle soreness per session, but hits your nervous system harder. A near-max squat isn't just a leg exercise, it's a whole body event that taxes your CNS, stabilizers, and even your mental focus. That's why strength programs build in longer recovery between sessions and often rotate heavy and light days. Energy demands differ too. Hypertrophy training burns more glycogen and leaves you breathless with that burning pump. Strength training feels different. Low reps, long rests, less pump, but a big hit to your nervous system. After a heavy 1RM attempt, you might not feel sore immediately, but you'll feel mentally drained and need serious rest. Joints and connective tissue are another factor. Heavy strength work puts more absolute stress on tendons and ligaments, which adapt more slowly than muscle. Hypertrophy training with moderate weights is usually kinder on the joints, but the higher weekly volume can still cause overuse if you overdo it. Because recovery needs differ, hypertrophy programs often use body part splits, push-pull legs or upper-lower, hitting each muscle once or twice a week. Strength programs often hit the same lifts multiple times weekly, but with lower reps and varying intensities. Nutrition plays a role too. Hypertrophy training ramps up appetite and requires plenty of carbs and protein to recover, while strength training relies more on sleep and CNS recovery to keep you fresh for heavy lifts. All right, here's the million-dollar question. Which one builds more muscle? The short answer? Hypertrophy training is the direct route to muscle size. Higher reps, more sets, intensity techniques, and moderate rest are all geared toward growth. But ignoring strength training would be a big mistake. Getting stronger lets you use heavier weights in your hypertrophy work, which means more tension and more growth over time. And heavy lifting directly stimulates the big type 2 muscle fibers that have the most potential for size. The truth is, hypertrophy and strength feed each other. More strength means you can lift heavier in the 8 to 12 rep range. More muscle means you have the potential to lift heavier in low rep strength work. This synergy is why power building programs have exploded in popularity. Blending both approaches often delivers better results than sticking to one. In fact, some research even suggests that combining strength and hypertrophy training can produce greater gains than hypertrophy alone. The exact numbers may vary, but the principle holds. Training both qualities amplifies results and prevents plateaus. So, how do you combine them? Here are some proven strategies. Periodization. Spend a few weeks focusing on hypertrophy, then shift to a block of strength training and cycle back. Each phase builds on the other. Bigger muscles help you lift more weight, and higher strength lets you overload those muscles in future hypertrophy blocks. Daily undulating periodization. Rotate rep ranges within the same week. One day might be heavy low rep squats, another day moderate reps, and another day higher rep accessory work. This way, you train both strength and hypertrophy all the time without letting one fade. Hybrid workouts. Mix both styles in the same session. 
start with heavy compound lifts in the low rep range, then shift into moderate weight, higher rep accessory work. For example, do heavy bench presses first, then follow with dumbbell presses and cable flies for volume and pump. Accessory work for balance. If you train mostly for strength, add hypertrophy-focused accessory moves in higher rep ranges. If you train mostly for hypertrophy, sprinkle in some heavy sets of squats, bench, or deadlifts at the start of your workouts. This keeps you progressing on both fronts. Power building programs. Establish routines like FAT, 531 plus Boring Butt Big, and even Jeff Nippert's programs combine both styles. They all follow the same idea. Heavy compounds for strength plus volume work for hypertrophy. Many of the most impressive physiques in history, from Ronnie Coleman to today's strongest lifters, have been built this way. Science backs it up. Studies show that moderate to heavy loads in the 70 to 85% of 1RM range are effective for both size and strength, and that hypertrophy can be achieved across a wide range of reps as long as sets are pushed close to failure. The key difference is that heavy loads build maximum strength more effectively, while moderate loads may be slightly more efficient for pure size. And one final reminder, progressive overload is the common denominator. Whether your focus is size or strength, you need to gradually increase the challenge over time. More reps, more sets, more weight, or better execution. If you're getting stronger, you're building muscle. If you're building muscle, you're raising your strength ceiling. Use both outcomes, your physique and your lifts, to track progress. Time to bust some myths about hypertrophy versus strength. Myth 1. Strength training is only for power lifters. Wrong! Heavy lifting builds dense muscle and strength that isolation moves can't. Even bodybuilders like Arnold trained heavy because it let them push more weight in the 8-12 to 12 rep range later. Stronger equals bigger, period. Myth 2. Hypertrophy training doesn't build strength. Tell that to Ronnie Coleman squatting 800 pounds. Hypertrophy training absolutely makes you stronger. Maybe not as efficiently as low rep training, but more muscle means more strength potential. Myth 3. Low reps don't build muscle. False. Heavy low rep work still builds size thanks to high mechanical tension. Olympic lifters and power lifters prove it. You may gain strength faster than size, but muscle growth still happens. Myth 4. You can't train size and strength at the same time. Of course you can. With smart programming, mixing rep ranges, cycling intensity, or hybrid workouts, you'll build both. It's not either or, it's about balance and recovery. Myth 5. Lightweights tone, heavyweights bulk. Nope. Muscles don't understand toning. Lightweights near failure can grow muscle, and heavyweights can too. Toning is just muscle plus fat loss. Training principles don't magically change. Myth 6. Hypertrophy makes you slow and non-functional. Not true. More muscle means more potential for power, provided you train to use it. Athletes often build muscle first, then sharpen it with speed and skill work. Hypertrophy isn't non-functional unless you ignore function. Strength and hypertrophy aren't enemies. Heavy work builds strength, volume builds muscle, and the smartest path is using both. If you follow fitness content online, you've probably noticed the rise of power building programs. Lifters want the best of both worlds, size and strength. Influencers like Jeff Nippard push evidence-based routines with multiple rep ranges, while athletes like Steffi Cohen blend heavy lifting with bodybuilding style accessories. Even bodybuilders now track strength PRs, not just the pump. A big trend is using rate of perceived exertion, or reps in reverse, to balance both goals. You might see a program prescribe three sets of five squats at RPE 8 for strength, followed by three sets of 12 leg presses at RPE 9 for hypertrophy. This auto-regulation keeps training productive without burnout. Modern coaches agree, as long as progressive overload and recovery are in place, mixing styles works. Popular templates like push-pull legs or upper-lower often split days between strength focus and hypertrophy focus. Apps like Juggernaut AI or Barbell Medicine's power building template bake this balance right in. Heavy top sets for strength, back off work for size. Hybrid athletes competing in both powerlifting and bodybuilding also show that the two goals complement each other. Strength phases build denser muscle, hypertrophy phases fuel bigger lifts. The science backs this up too. Research from 2023 to 2025 shows there's little interference between hypertrophy and strength work. In fact, combining them yields the most complete results. 
If your program completely ignores one side, that's a red flag. Training not only works, it keeps your sessions more fun, varied, and sustainable. Which builds more muscle, hypertrophy or strength? The truth is both. Hypertrophy training maximizes size with higher reps and volume, while strength training, with enough sets, also builds muscle and makes you stronger. They work best together. Hypertrophy gives you mass, and strength lets you lift heavier and push that mass further. For beginners, just train across rep ranges and progress consistently. Intermediates and advanced lifters should cycle or mix both styles to break plateaus and keep improving. Bottom line, don't choose one, use both. Look strong, be strong. If you want to achieve a Greek god physique naturally, make sure you watch this video where I rank the best and worst exercises for muscle building.